Here we are in Paris at the Rugby World Cup, and surely the most disappointing team as far as the group stage, the pool match stage goes, has to be the Wallabies, has to be the two-time world champions. The raconteur, the Republican, the journalist, the columnist, the former Wallaby. He didn't actually play in a World Cup in 1991. He got replaced by John Eels, the man they call nobody, nobody. It's perfect. That's why they call John Eels that. He won two World Cups, John Eels. But I'm talking about Peter Fitzsimons, the loudmouth, lovable Australian larrikin who is going to be with us over the next couple of weeks. Well, who didn't buy into the Eddie Jones hype? We all did. I did. I've got to put my hand up and say it. When he became Wallaby coach, when Hamish McLennan appointed him, part of the deal was to get publicity, to create front page headlines. And Eddie Jones is then. Eddie Jones, mate, every time he goes to a press conference, of course, people on my side of the microphone, we love it because so few people in rugby talk. So few people even have a personality or the kind of personality that you actually love at a press conference because the guy's going to say something provocative. However, that doesn't mean that your team wins World Cup rugby matches. And this Australian side slink. They skulk back to Australia in ignominy and shame as the worst Wallaby side that's ever fronted at a World Cup. And I say that because simply the results say that. Knocked out in the pool stage in a group with Wales and Fiji. Uh, they, they couldn't beat Fiji. They couldn't beat Wales. They lost both of those games. A win in either of those games and they probably would have made it through. And of course, with Portugal beating Fiji last night, French time, well, the Wallabies, if they'd even got close or scored a bonus point against Wales, they would probably be in the quarterfinals and who knows from there. So as that team makes their miserable way back to Australia, Lord Peter Fitzsimons joins us. He's also scarpered out of Paris. What, you're on your way to Marseille because that's a more convenient exit, is it? Let's start with the good news. Were you watching the Portugal yes. match against Fiji? fantastic. Weren't they magnificent? I mean, what a, fan, what a fantastic game of rugby that was. And there was only one commentator, one commentator who said, don't dismiss Portugal, they're actually pretty good. Can you guess who that commentator was, Martin? Well, I would say that if I was reading a column in the Sydney Morning Herald, I'd probably be along the right train track towards the guy that was saying that. I said it from the beginning. I said, these guys are serious. Portugal, they, they, a lot of them play in the French competition. And Fiji, they're, geez, they're a wonderful bunch of people. You know, like they, the way they have played um, throughout has been great. But there's no way. But, but Portugal, you know, they're technically skilled. They're not as big as the Fijians. Probably, I think it's fair to say, a little more disciplined. Um, and so when they played last night, it was just magnificent rugby. And we Australians, we needed them to win by eight points. <laughs> Everybody was saying, I've put this, I've written in the Herald a couple of times, you know, look, watch out for Portugal. Everybody saying, don't be daft. And before our very eyes, they played this magnificent rugby, kept coming, kept coming, ended up one point ahead with 30 seconds to go. There was still a chance, a technical chance that, that you know they could score a, they could score a converted try and it would have been at at Marseille airport paging Mr Jones Mr Eddie Jones please <laughs> report to the counter please this is urgent your 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 flight's cancelled there's a bus waiting for you you're in the quarterfinals and had we got into the quarterfinals we'd be against a very weakened England side we'd have Will Skelton back we'd have Taniela Tupau back you know? We could have got to the semi-finals. If you get to the semi-finals, you may well get against a really battered, bruised French side or battered, bruised South African side or even better, a battered, bruised all-black side. Who knows what had happened? We could have won the whole damn thing, Martin. I'm telling you, it was just amazing. And all these castles in the air, these empires in the sky appeared before our eyes. But with 30 seconds to go and Portugal had the choice, we kick it out. And we win the win the match definitely, or we go for the converted try, running from our own to, from our own goal line, and try to get the Australians over line. Well, what did you think those Portuguese did? Do you think they took the selfish option and just kicked out and won the game? I hope they did. I hope they did. I hope they did. And that's exactly what they did. You know, <laughs> the, the whole you know we were, we were been talking about it during the show. You know, your exit has to be the most disappointing out of all the teams, and 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 I keep asking myself why that is, Peter, and it's because I believed the Eddie Jones hype like everyone else did five losses. 
losses building up to the World Cup. And you're thinking, you know, you've got the easiest pool. All you've got to do really is beat Fiji. You got thumped 40 to 6 by Wales, which is a disgraceful Dude. result. But as you say, as we spoke last week, it all came down to one up and under. And your three drones, your four guys on computers, your 19 sports scientists couldn't yep. tell any of your players to call my ball. The most simple thing, the most this was, the two words in rugby that mm. every single person understands. What now happens? Because you've got a World Cup coming, you've got a Lions Tour coming, and this guy, Eddie Jones, can't continue the hot air and the bluster because no one's going to believe it anymore. Well, you're beating my drum. This is what I've been saying from the beginning. And I interviewed Tim Horan, the great Tim Horan, who's a mate of mine, um, who I think played 82, yeah, he played 80 tests for the Wallabies. He's now a commentator on Stan Sport. He was the most valuable player, best player in the 1999 World Cup. And I said to him, Tim, I said, love, I said, pet, I said, look. I said, you remember that I've got very little technical knowledge of rugby when you and I were playing together, even less in the professional realm. So let me run by you the things that I have I have gained from watching all this to see if my assumptions are correct. And my opening point was exactly that one you've just named. When nobody cries out my, mine, it's madness. He said, correct. I said, I said, well, what about when the Wallabies against Fiji with one minute to go, kick the damn ball, you know, kick the damn ball down the field instead of keeping it? Was that madness? He said, madness. I said, Campo... Campo said that against Fiji, against Wales, it was a structured snore fest. I say it wasn't a structured snore fest. It was a combination between an upturned bowl of spaghetti and the fall of Saigon. <laughs> who is who is correct? Who is correct? And he said, he went, he prevaricated a bit. I said, Tim, stop mucking around. Who is correct? And he said, Fitz, you are. Campo is never correct. And so I was satisfied with all that. And yes, you know, is it dispiriting? Is it disappointing? Yes, it is. But was getting Eddie Jones back madness? I say, no, it wasn't. I say, it's been a disaster, an absolute disaster, getting Eddie Jones back. Was that was it obvious at the time that that would be a disaster? No, well, it wasn't obvious to me. I mean, like, I like Dave Rennie, good guy, Dave Rennie, nice guy, Dave Rennie, and had reasonable results, Dave Rennie. But when you, and, you know, came within an ace of beating the All Blacks, came within an ace of beating France, I mean, pretty, pretty good results. And, but when you've got Eddie Jones, who has got more points on the board as a coach, he's a human cattle prod getting results out of his teams. When he's suddenly available, you know, it, to get him back was a brutal brutal, but to me, seemingly brilliant move. Where do we go from here? And I said with Tim Horan, I mean, this is the other thing that came out of Tim Horan. Because I'd written in the Herald, I said, look, Eddie's just got to go. Just got to go. You can't you can't perform the way the Wallabies have performed and be like that. Horan differed there. He'd been in the dressing room. He's been around the players a lot more than I have. And to my amazement, he says, and I take Tim at his word, that, that Eddie Jones still has the dressing room, that the players still believe in him, which which is nice. But those players are not necessarily, you know, if, if you and I, Martin, let's just say you and I got together with, our, got together with um, Dr. Evil and the three of us said, all right, let's work out, this is six months ago, let's work out how we can completely stuff up the Wallabies I would say, okay, okay. Here's the plan. Here's the plan. We'll have, we'll have, we'll wipe out anybody that's played over 30, 40 tests. Okay, can't play anymore. We won't take them. Okay, we'll leave Michael Hooper with a 110 test. We'll leave him behind. Foley, no, too experienced. We'll leave him. Behind. And you'd say, okay, that that's a great plan. Then, then you'd say, okay, okay, okay. We'll have nobody call out mine. When the ball goes, I'd say, don't be ridiculous. No, but, you know, Dr. Evil and I would put you back in your box and say that's not possible. So the way that Eddie's done it has been, the way the way they've performed has been out, outrageously bad. But Tim Horan makes the point, there are talented players there. There are some very good players, but under Eddie, they just haven't performed. Horan, Horan however, says he still enjoys their confidence. They should stay there and grow into being the team we hope they can be. 
We are facing a quarterfinal ourselves against Ireland this weekend. If the All Blacks don't win, then this is going to be the worst. Who's we? Who's we? The Who's All Blacks, we? of Who's course. We? The All Blacks. And, and if the, we, all, oh, the, are the All Blacks, Blacks that still, team's still in the still tournament. In the, well, you see, if, if, still in the tournament. if we lose which, in the knockout right. stage, which is something, you see, we, I mean, I, 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 I can't even comprehend what it's like to lose in the group stage because that's never happened to New Zealand rugby. But if we yeah. lose in the quarterfinal stage, having lost a group match, we will return home as the worst All Blacks side ever to attend a World Cup. This can great you, honour is now to be bestowed upon the Wallabies. You are now, this particular team, the worst side you have ever sent to a Rugby World mm. Cup. No question. Yeah, can I just interrupt? Just before we go on, can you just fact check that? Are you sure the All Blacks are still a part of it? Because oh, all I read about, I, no, no, hold on, hold on. I've been reading a lot about it every day in the French press and the English and the Australian press. I've read everything about Ireland and everything about South Africa and everything about, about uh, France. Are you sure? Sh- are you sure the All Blacks are still sort of a part of it? Haven't they gone home? I'm not even going to entertain that. It's just absolutely ridiculous. But isn't it true? There's been no press really on the All Blacks. Oh, come on, mate. I mean, that's because we're now flying under the radar. We're supposedly the underdogs. We're supposedly, oh, the outside chance. Come on, we're the All Blacks. We bring Johnson up, mate. Now, Led, tell me, from this point on, before you do go back to Australia and, and accept the fact that, yes, once again, you're rebuilding from the base and this beautiful sport that you love so much is now the 17th or 18th ranked most popular sport in your own land, who is going to win from here? Tell me who the four semi-finalists are going to be. Well, it won't be the All Blacks. That's for a start. Um, you know, like they, they're, they're lovely people, and they, they've they've comported themselves, you know, well, and they're highly regarded. And the Kiwi supporters are terrific. But I think we all know that the All Blacks are completely off the boil. Is that is that fair, Martin? Oh, I, look, I, I I don't have a lot of confidence. No, but that is only because I don't actually believe physically we can match the Irish. And after watching Ireland beat South Africa in the way that they did, I mean, this is an Irish team to me that right. has ticked every box. Yeah. You know, and 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 the only box they haven't ticked is to get out of a World Cup quarterfinal. I think that they go in as favourites against us. Yeah. The only thing you'll remember when, as a serious point in two thousand and nineteen. You remember when England, coached by Eddie Jones, completely dusted the All Blacks oh, yes. in the semi-final, yes, and then had absolute—I mean, it was—it was a phenomenal performance by the English team uh, under Eddie. And then they were so shattered with exhaustion or whatever they'd played their grand final. They got to—they got to the top of Everest, and then they couldn't get over one of the foothills, um, you know, which was I think South Africa, was it? That in the final, they just. That, and I wonder, that Irish team that beat South Africa, Jesus wept, that was a physical game. I mean, that was 80 minutes of absolute intensity. And I wonder, with the All Blacks, who, who right now, they look like men in black jerseys and they look like really, really good players. And they are. They're very good players and they're wearing black jerseys. But they don't quite have the aura Agreed. of totally the great... Or, well, the great... The, the great All Black teams, I, I wrote the, I've wrote written about this extensively, but I played against great All Black teams, and when they came out, there'd be this sort of shimmer over them. They'd be black and they'd be doing the haka, but there'd be this shimmer above them, and the shimmer would be, we're the All Blacks. Don't even think about beating us. Don't even think about it. The best you can hope for is to get within 20 point of us, but we're the All Blacks. We're the finest rugby team in the world. You're lucky to be on the field and against us, you know, and... That was what the great All Black teams look like. This this team doesn't look like that. They look like a really fine rugby team of fine men that put like really strong rugby, but they don't have that feel about them of world champions, or they don't really have a feel about them of even close to world champions. Which is not to say that, given the way they performed, if there's one brilliant perf- we, let's agree on this, Martin. If there is one brilliant performance in the All Blacks this year. Can we agree that we haven't seen it yet? So they haven't they haven't they haven't shot their bolt any time recently. You know, they they may have a brilliant performance in them coming up, whereas Ireland against South Africa were brilliant. France against the All Blacks in that in that opening match were brilliant. So, you know, I guess anything's possible, but I do say the All Blacks don't look quite like a world champion team right now.